Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video we're gonna talk about soloing in the style of Dickie Betts over this classic blues in the key of G, Stormy Monday. Now, if you haven't already seen the lesson that I posted on playing basically the classic slow blues, Stormy Monday, all the rhythm parts broken down for you, note for note, step by step, be sure to check that video out. I'll link it up down below. But in this video, we're gonna talk about soloing over this blues. And I'm gonna show you some classic Dickie Betts style lead parts that you can play over these chord changes. And the idea is just to build you up with some vocabulary and some phrases that can help you start getting a great blues sound when it comes to soloing. But real quick, before we dive in, if you haven't downloaded my fretboard guide yet, you're gonna wanna grab this at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five chords and scales that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And this is gonna tie in directly with today's lesson, because when it comes to soloing, you wanna have some basic scale patterns worked out on the neck so you know what notes you can choose from that are gonna be in the key as a starting point. So I recommend grabbing that first. All you gotta do is go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below to grab your copy completely for free. All right, well with that said, let's get into the lesson. Let's break down some Dickie Betts style soloing here over Stormy Monday. Now the first lick is a G7 blues lick. So this really could be used anywhere in a 12 bar blues, but it's used over the one chord, you know, a G chord, and it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. And this is a lick, I'm thinking about this shape here for those of you that are familiar with the caged system. This is like a C shape here for our G chord. We're gonna start right on that root note, the eighth fret of the second string. Then we're gonna do a hammer from six to seven on the first string. So we've got. Then we'll play the eighth fret. Then we're gonna bend that eighth fret up a half step. Then we're gonna bend it a whole step. So it's progressively moving up, up to that note D, but we're, we're getting there with hammer-ons and string bends like this. Then it finishes back down doing that hammer from six to seven and then back on that root note, we're sort of dipping off of this shape a little bit, right? We're doing this bluesy embellishment into what's called the third of the chord. So if we're thinking about a G chord, that third of the G is the note B. And oftentimes in the blues, we'll do a minor third to a major third. And this lick comes out of a very classic lick that I've played for years. I can't even remember where I picked it up, but I've heard it on so many records. And the idea is you just walk up all those notes chromatically like this. And, and what I'm doing there is taking every single fret from six up to 10. And I'm sliding, I'm bringing that index, not really sliding, just scooting, <laughs> scooting my index up and then one, two, three, four. And then coming back to that root note. So this is a variation on a very classic blues lick, but I like how Dickie Betts does it with bends because you can get a little bit more expression out of the notes. So again, there's my chord I'm thinking about. That's it without bends. I like it with bends though. So. 
So that's the first lick. Now the second lick is again over G7. Now we're going to move down to this shape here. This is like a E shape, but for a G chord. Again, tying in that caged system. That's it, that's the lick. Very simple as far as not a lot of notes, but a really cool expressive phrase. And it just beautifully outlines a very classic blues sound, kind of like a T-Bone Walker. So what this is, is again, visualize this chord. What we're gonna do is slide up to the third of the chord, which happens to be the fourth fret on the third string. Then grab the third fret of the first string. Could almost be like Freddie King, <laughs> using a six like that. And then we're gonna bend the fifth fret up to sound like the note at the sixth fret. So, really cool sound there. Now that could be used over the one chord G7. But it also could be used over that part in Stormy Monday where the chords go up a half step. So, and you, what you do is you get this. sound of 13 chords moving up a half step. It's a really cool sound. So that's the second lick. Now the third and final lick is another really great one. Here's what it sounds like. I love this phrase and I actually, I think I first learned it from Stevie Ray Vaughan. He would do this thing where he'd go and he would just, he would just take that again, it's all thinking out of that G minor pentatonic or G blues here and, and what we're doing is we're just bending that, you know, if you go to that note, which is the note C there up to the D note. What you do is you bend it up a whole step and then you just play triplets bop, 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 with the strum hand. But as you're doing it, you're just shaking the note and then you're dropping it down from a whole step down to just the natural C note there. So it's... You just bring it down until you get to the fifth fret. So it kind of starts on the end of one, like one and a two and a two. And then you do this on the last one. Do that hammer three to four, which looks like it's the same thing that we were doing there, just down the octave. Okay, so. And then on the downbeat here, we play this turnaround lick. that part because it's going over the earth. The turnaround chords, the last two bars of your blues. So that's three, six, three, five, four, three. Again, what scale is that? I don't know of a scale. There's maybe someone out there who knows a lot more about theory than me can tell me, but I don't think that's a scale. I think it's really just this note and then walking down, you know? So again, if, if you take the scale approach, you're going to miss all these cool notes that Dickie Betts is using. So now how about this? 
that's really just G to a D. That's what I hear there, and I hear these shapes. I hear this G shape to this D7 sharp 5. And the way you do that is you embellish the third, and then you finish on the root note. You hear that as sort of the resolution there to the last chord of the blues, and then it finally resolves, you know, back to the top. This is the turnaround. So take those licks and see if you can practice improvising with them and just learning them is going to help shape the vocabulary under your fingers and these are the things that you want your fingers to fall back upon because they do. Your fingers go back to what you practice. It shows up in the music that you play. So you want to make sure you're practicing good lines and good phrases instead of boring exercises. So take it lick by lick, work it out step by step, and be sure to do a lot of listening to the recording as well. And to help you put this together even more, you're going to want to grab my fretboard guide at the first link down below. And all you got to do is go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide. You can download it right there. It's going to dive deeper into these topics and show you the five chords and scales that I use every day when I'm playing guitar, and it's going to give you a system for mapping out the fretboard. And I think this is the easiest way to look at it. So just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide right now and grab your copy. Next, I want to hear from you. Leave a comment down below and let me know your number one song that you would like to see me teach on the channel next. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you have an amazing day and we'll see you in another video real soon. Thank <laughs> you.